magnetism. Explain how magnetic poles affect each other. Describe the magnetic field in the space around a magnet. Describe how magnetic fields are produced. Describe how to make a permanent magnet. Describe the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire. Describe how a magnetic field exerts a force on a charged particle in the field. Describe how current is affected by a magnetic field. Describe how a galvanometer and a motor work. Suggest a possible cause for Earth's magnetic field. The big idea, the magnetic field surrounds a moving electric charge. Electricity and magnetism were regarded as unrelated phenomena into the early 19th century. This changed in 1820 when a Danish science professor, Hans Christian Orsted, discovered a relationship between the two while demonstrating electric currents in front of a class of students. When electric current was passed in a wire near a magnetic compass, both Orsted and his students noticed the deflection of the compass needle. This was the connecting link that had eluded investigators for decades. Other discoveries soon followed. Magnets were found to exert force on current carrying wires, which led to electric meters and motors. The stage was set for a whole new technology, which would eventually bring electric power, radio, and television. What does a magnetic field look like? Place a bar magnet on a level surface. Cover the magnet with a thin sheet of glass, clear plastic, or cardboard. Sprinkle iron filings onto a sheet in the area above the magnet. Gently tap the sheet and observe the pattern formed by the filings. Repeat steps one and two using two bar magnets. Arrange the magnets in a straight line with opposite poles facing each other, leaving a gap of four to six centimeters between poles. Rotate one of the magnets 180 degrees and observe any change in the pattern form by the filings. Observing. Make sketches of the patterns produced by the single magnet and by a pair of magnets in both orientations. Predicting. What pattern do you think would be formed if you used a horseshoe magnet in step one. Making generalizations. Describe some characteristics common to the patterns you observe. What do you think these patterns represent? 36.1 Magnetic Poles. Magnets exert forces on one another. They are similar to electric charges, for they can both attract and repel without touching, depending on which end is held near the other. Also, like electric charges, the strength of their interaction depends on the distance of separation of the two magnets. Whereas electric charges produce electrical forces, regions called magnetic poles produce magnetic forces. If you suspend a bar magnet from its center by a piece of string, it will act as a compass. The end that points northward is called the north seeking pole and the end that points southward is the south seeking pole. More simply, these are called the north and south poles. Figure 36 1. Which interaction has the greater strength, the gravitational attraction between the scrap iron and earth or the magnetic attraction between the magnet and the scrap iron? All magnets have both a north and a south pole. For a simple bar magnet, the poles are located at the two ends. The common horseshoe magnet is a bar magnet that has been bent, so its poles are also at its two ends. If the north pole of one magnet is brought near the north pole of another magnet, they repel. The same is true of a south pole near a south pole. If opposite poles are brought together, however, attraction occurs. Like poles repel, opposite poles attract. Magnetic poles behave similarly to electric charges in some ways, but there is a very important difference. Electric charges can be isolated, but magnetic poles cannot. 
negatively charged electrons and positively charged protons are entities by themselves. 36.2, common magnets have a variety of shapes. A cluster of electrons need to be accompanied by a cluster of protons and vice versa, but a north magnetic pole never exists without the presence of a south pole and vice versa. Notes, beware of junk scientists who sell magnets to cure physical ailments. Claims for cures are bogus. We need a knowledge filter to tell us the difference between what is true and what seems to be true. The best knowledge filter ever invented is science. Does every magnet necessarily have a north and a south pole? Yes, just as every coin has two sides, a head and a tail, some trick magnets have more than two poles. The north and south poles of a magnet are like the head and tail of the same coin. If you break a bar magnet in half, as shown in figure 36.3, each half still behaves as a complete magnet. Break the pieces in half again, and you have four complete magnets. You can continue breaking the pieces in half and never isolate a single pole. Even when your piece is one atom thick, there are two poles. This suggests that atoms themselves are magnets. Concept check. How do magnetic poles affect each other? 36.3. Magnetic poles always exist in pairs. Keep breaking a magnet in half and you will never isolate a single pole. 36.2. Magnetic fields. Place a sheet of paper over a bar magnet and sprinkle iron filings on the paper. The filings will tend to trace out an orderly pattern of lines that surround the magnet. The space around a magnet in which a magnetic force is exerted is filled with a magnetic field. The shape of the field is revealed by magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines spread out from one pole, curve around the magnet, and return to the other pole as shown in figure 36.4. The direction of a magnetic field outside a magnet is from the north to the south pole. Figure 36.4. Iron filings trace out a pattern of magnetic field lines in the space surrounding the magnet. Figure 36.5. You observe different magnetic field patterns for a pair of magnets when A, like poles are near each other, and B, opposite poles are near each other. Where the lines are closer together, the field strength is greater. We see that the magnetic field strength is greatest at the poles. If we place another magnet or small compass anywhere in the field, its poles will tend to line up with the magnetic field as shown in figure 36.6. Concept check. What is the direction of the magnetic field outside a magnet? Figure 36.6. Like the iron filings, the compasses line up with the magnetic field lines. 36.3. The nature of a magnetic field. Magnetism is very much related to electricity. Just as an electric charge is surrounded by an electric field, a moving electric charge is also surrounded by a magnetic field. This is due to the distortions in the electric field caused by motion and was explained by Albert Einstein in 1905 in his theory of special relativity. This text will not go into the details ex except to acknowledge that a magnetic field is a relativistic byproduct of the electric field. Charges in motion have associated with them both an electric and a magnetic field. A magnetic field is produced by the motion of electric charge. Electrons in motion. Where's the motion of electric charges in a common bar magnet? Although the magnet as a whole may be stationary, it is composed of atoms whose electrons are in constant motion about atomic nuclei. This moving charge constitutes a tiny current and produces a magnetic field. More important, electrons can be thought of as spinning about their own axis like tops. A spinning electron constitutes a charge in motion 
and thus creates another magnetic field. In most materials, the field due to the spinning predominates over the field due to orbital motion. Spin magnetism. Every spinning electron is a tiny magnet. A pair of electrons spinning in the same direction makes up a stronger magnet. Figure 36.7, both the orbital motion and the spinning motion of every electron in an atom produce magnetic fields. Electrons spinning in opposite directions, however, work against one another. Their magnetic fields cancel. This is why most substances are not magnets. In most atoms, the various fields cancel one another because the electrons spin in opposite directions. In materials such as iron, nickel, and cobalt, however, the fields do not cancel one another entirely. Each iron atom has four electrons whose spin magnetism is uncanceled. Each iron atom, then, is a tiny magnet. The same is true to a lesser degree for the atoms of nickel and cobalt. Concept check. How is a magnetic field produced? 36.4. Magnetic domains. The magnetic fields of individual iron atoms are so strong that interactions among adjacent iron atoms cause large clusters of them to line up with one another. These clusters of aligned atoms are called magnetic domains. Each domain is perfectly magnetized and is made up of billions of aligned atoms. The domains are microscopic, and there are many of them in a crystal of iron. The difference between a piece of ordinary iron and an iron magnet is the alignment of domains. In a common iron nail, the domains are randomly oriented. When a strong magnet is brought nearby, as shown in figure 36.9, two effects take place. Figure 36.8, a crystal of iron contains microscopic clusters of aligned atoms called magnetic domains. Each domain consists of billions of aligned iron atoms. 36.9, the iron nails become induced magnets. One is a growth in the size of the domains that are oriented in the direction of the magnetic field. This growth is at the expense of domains that are not aligned. The other effect is a rotation of domains as they are brought into alignment. The domains become aligned much as electric dipoles are aligned in the presence of a charged rod. When you remove the nail from the magnet, ordinary thermal motion causes most, of, most or all of the domains in the nail to return to a random arrangement. Permanent magnets are made by simply placing pieces of iron or certain iron alloys in strong magnetic fields. Alloys of, or of iron differ. Soft iron is easier to magnetize than steel. It helps to tap the iron to nudge any stubborn domains into alignment. Figure 3610. The illustrations show a piece of iron in successive stages of magnetism. The arrows represent domains where the head is a north pole and the tail is a south pole. Poles of neighboring domains neutralize one another's effect except at the ends. Think. The iron filings sprinkled on the paper that covers the magnet in figure 36.4 were not initially magnetized. Why then do they line up with the magnetic field of the magnet? Domains align in the individual filings, causing them to act like tiny compasses. The poles of each compass are pulled in opposite directions, producing a torque that twists each filing into alignment with the external magnetic field. Another way of making a permanent magnet is to stroke a piece of iron with a magnet. The stroking motion aligns the domains in the magnet. If a permanent magnet is dropped or heated, some of the domains are jostled out of alignment and the magnet becomes weaker. A mag strip on a credit card contains millions of tiny magnetic domains held together 
by a resin binder. Data are encoded in binary with zeros and ones distinguished by the frequency of domain reversals. Concept check, how can you make a permanent magnet? Uncanny magnetism. Hold a magnetic compass vertically just above the tops of some iron or steel objects in your classroom or home. See if the north pole of the compass points to the tops of the objects and the south pole points to the bottoms. If so, the objects have become magnetized by Earth's magnetic field. Place the compass alongside a can or stored food in your pantry. See if the can is magnetized. Turn the can over and see how many days it takes for it to lose its magnetism and then reverse its polarity. Think, why does the can gradually lose its magnetism after you turn it over? 36.5. Electric currents and magnetic fields. A moving charge produces a magnetic field. You also observe a magnetic field when many charges are in motion. That is, when a current flows through a conductor. An electric current produces a magnetic field. The magnetic field that surrounds a current-carrying conductor can be demonstrated by arranging an assortment of magnetic compasses around a wire and passing the current through it, as shown in figure 3611. The compasses line up with the magnetic field produced by the current and show it to be a pattern of concentric circles about the wire. Figure 3611a, when there is no current in the wire, the compass is aligned with Earth's magnetic field. B, when there is a current in the wire, the compass is aligned with the stronger magnetic field near the wire. When the current reverses direction, the compass is turned completely around, showing that the direction of the magnetic field changes also. This is the effect that Orsted first demonstrated. If the wire is bent into a loop, the magnetic field lines become bunched up inside the loop, as shown in figure 3612. If the wire is bent into another loop overlapping the first, the concentration of magnetic field lines inside the double loop is twice as much as in the single loop. It follows that the magnetic field intensity in this region is increased as the number of loops is increased. A current carrying coil of wire with many loops is an electromagnet. Concept check. Why does a current carrying wire deflect a magnetic compass? Figure 3612. Magnetic field lines about a current carrying wire crowd up when the wire is bent into a loop. Figure 3613. Iron filings sprinkled on paper reveal the magnetic field configurations about A, a current carrying wire, B, a current carrying loop, and C, a coil of loops. Maglev transportation, science, technology, and society. An exciting application of superconducting electromagnets is magnetically levitated or maglev transportation, shown here, is a maglev train that shuttles passengers to and from Shanghai International Airport at speeds of up to 460 kilometers per hour. It covers some 30 kilometers in less than eight minutes. The train carries superconducting coils on its underside. Moving along the aluminum track called a guideway, the coils generate current in the aluminum that acts as mirror image magnets and repel the train. It floats about 10 millimeters above the guideway and its speed is limited only by air friction and passenger comfort. Watch for the proliferation of this relatively new technology. Critical thinking, what advantages do magnetically levitated trains have over conventional trains? 36.6. Magnetic forces on moving charged particles. A charged particle at rest will not interact with a static magnetic field, 
but if the charged particle moves in a magnetic field, the charged particle experiences a deflecting force. This force is greatest when the particle moves in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. At other angles, the force is less. It becomes zero when the particle moves parallel to the field lines. In any case, the direction of the force is always perpendicular to both the magnetic field lines and the velocity of the charged particle, as shown in figure 36.14. Notes. In your next physics course, you'll learn the simple right-hand rule. Figure 36.14, a beam of electrons is deflected by a magnetic field. A moving charge is deflected when it crosses magnetic field lines, but not when it travels parallel to the field lines. This sideways deflecting force is very different from the forces that occur in other interactions, such as the force of gravitation between masses, the electrostatic force between charges, and the force between magnetic poles. The force that acts on a moving charge particle does not act in a direction between the sources of interaction, but instead acts perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the electron velocity. It's nice that charged particles are deflected by magnetic fields. For this fact was employed in early TV tubes to steer electrons onto the inner surface of the screen and provide a picture. This effort of magnetic fields also works on a large scale. As shown in figure 3615, charged particles from outer space are deflected by Earth's magnetic field, which reduces the intensity of cosmic radiation. A much greater reduction in intensity results from the absorption of cosmic rays in our atmosphere. Concept check. What happens when a charged particle moves in a magnetic field? Figure 3615. The magnetic field of Earth deflects many charged particles that make up cosmic radiation. 367. Magnetic forces on current carrying wires. Since a charged particle moving through a magnetic field experiences a deflecting force, a current of charged particles moving through a magnetic field also experiences a deflecting force. If the particles are trapped inside a wire when they respond to the deflecting force, the wire will also move as shown in figure 3616. If the direction of the current in the wire is reversed, the deflecting force acts in the opposite direction. The force is maximum when the current is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Figure 3616, a current carrying wire experiences a force in a magnetic field. The direction of force is along neither the magnetic field lines nor the direction of current. The force is perpendicular to both field lines and current, and it is a sideways force. There is a symmetry here. Just as a current carrying wire will deflect a magnetic compass, a magnet will deflect a current carrying wire. Both cases show different effects of the same phenomenon. The discovery that a magnet exerts a force on a current carrying wire created much excitement, for almost immediately people began harnessing this force for useful purposes with great sensitivity to electric meters and with great force in electric motors. Concept check. How is current affected? by a magnetic field. Think. What law of physics tells you that if a current carrying wire produces a force on a magnet, a magnet must produce a force on a current carrying wire? Newton's third law, which applies to all forces in nature. Sound reproduction linked to technology. The loudspeakers of sound producing systems change electric signals into sound waves. Electric currents pass through a coil wound around the neck of a paper cone. This coil acts as an electromagnet, which is located near a permanent magnet. When current flows one way, magnetic force pushes the electromagnet.
toward the permanent magnet, pulling the cone inward. When current flows the other way, the cone is pushed outward. Vibrations in the electric signal then cause the cone to vibrate. Vibrations of the cone produce sound waves in the air. 36.8 meters to motors. The simplest meter to detect electric current is shown in figure 3617. It consists of a magnetic needle on a pivot at the center of a number of loops of insulated wire. When an electric current passes through the coil, each loop produces its own effect on the needle so that a very small current can be detected. A sensitive current inducing instrument is called a galvanometer, common galvanometers. A more common design is shown in figure 3618A. It employs more loops of wire and is therefore more sensitive. The coil is mounted for movement and the magnet is held stationary. 3617. You can make a very simple galvanometer with a magnetic needle and insulated wire. Figure 3618. A. A common galvanometer consists of a stationary magnet and a movable coil of wire. B. A multimeter can function as both an ammeter and a voltmeter. The resistance of the instrument is made to be very low for the ammeter and very high for the voltmeter. The coil turns against a spring, so the greater the current in its loops, the greater its deflection. A galvanometer may be calibrated to measure current amps, in which case it is called an ammeter, or it may be calibrated to measure electric potential volts in which case it is called a voltmeter. The electric motors, it, the design of the galvanometer is slightly modified. You have an electric motor. A motor and generator are the same device with input or output reversed. The electrical device in a hybrid car operates both ways. How is a galvanometer similar to a simple electric motor? How do they fundamentally differ? A galvanometer and a motor are similar in that they both employ coils positioned in magnetic fields. When current passes through the coils, forces on the wires rotate the coils. The fundamental difference is that the maximum rotation of the coils in a galvanometer is one half turn, whereas in a motor the coil armature rotates through many complete turns. In the armature of a motor, the current is made to change direction with each half turn of the armature. The principal difference between a galvanometer and an electric motor is that in an electric motor the current is made to change direction every time the coil makes a half revolution. After it has been forced to rotate one half revolution, it overshoots just in time for the current to reverse, whereupon the coil is forced to continue another half rotation and so on in cycle fashion to produce continuous rotation. A simple DC motor is shown in bare outline in figure 3619. A permanent magnet is used to produce a magnetic field in the region where the rectangular loop of the wire is mounted so that it can turn about an axis as shown. Figure 3619. A simplified DC motor can be constructed from a magnet a rotating loop of wire and a voltage source. When a current passes through the loop, it flows in opposite directions in the upper and lower sides of the loop. It has to do this because if charge flows into one end of the loop, it must flow out the other end. If the upper portion of the loop is forced to the left, then the lower portion is forced to the right, as if it were a galvanometer. But unlike a galvanometer, the current is reversed during each half revolution by means of stationary contacts on the shaft. The parts of the wire that brush against these contacts are called brushes. In this way, the current in the loop alternates so that the forces in the upper and lower regions do not change direction as the loop rotates. The rotation is continuous 
as long as current is supplied. Larger motors, DC or AC, are usually made by replacing the permanent magnets with the electromagnets that is energized by the power source. Of course, more than a single loop is used. Many loops of wire are wound around an iron cylinder called an armature, which then rotates when energized with electric current. The advent of the motor made it possible to replace enormous human and animal toil by electric power in most parts of the world. The electric motors have greatly changed the way people live. Concept check. What is the main difference between a galvanometer and an electric motor? Oceanography. Physics on the job. Earth scientists who study the oceans and seas are called oceanographers. Using submersibles that resemble spacecraft, oceanographers study the composition and characteristic of the ocean floor. Some oceanographers use sensitive instruments to identify and measure the magnetic fields found in deep ocean rocks. By studying these magnetic patterns, they have learned that the Atlantic Ocean gets a little bit wider each year. Job opportunities exist for oceanographers in academic, private, and government research laboratories. 36.9, Earth's magnetic field. A compass points northward because Earth itself is a huge magnet. The compass aligns with the magnetic field of Earth. The magnetic poles of Earth, however, do not coincide with the geographic poles. In fact, they aren't even close to the geographic poles. Figure 3620 illustrates the discrepancy. The magnetic pole in the northern hemisphere, for example, is located some 800 kilometers from the geographic north pole southwest of Sverdrup Island in northern Canada. Figure 3620, Earth is a gigantic magnet. The other magnetic pole is located just off the coast of Antarctica. This means that compasses do not generally point to the true north. The discrepancy between the orientation of the compass and true north is known as the magnetic declination, moving charges. Within Earth, it is not known exactly why Earth itself is a magnet. The configuration of Earth's magnetic field is like that of a strong bar magnet placed near the center of the Earth. But Earth is not a magnetized chunk of iron like a bar magnet. It is simply too hot for individual atoms to remain aligned. Currents in the molten core of Earth provide a better explanation for Earth's magnetic field. Most geologists think that moving particles looping around within Earth create its magnetic field. Because of Earth's great size, the speed of moving charges would have to be less than one millimeter per second to account for the field. The convection currents in Earth's molten interior, shown in figure 3621, are driven by rising heat from radioactive decay within Earth's core. Perhaps such convection currents combined with the rotational effects of the Earth produce Earth's magnetic field. A firmer explanation awaits more study. Magnetic field reversals. Whatever the cause, the magnetic field of the Earth is not stable. It has flip-flopped throughout geological time. Evidence of this comes from analysis of the magnetic properties of rock strata. Iron atoms in a molten state tend to align themselves with Earth's magnetic field. Figure 3621. Convection currents in the molten parts of the Earth's interior may produce Earth's magnetic field. When the iron solidifies, the direction of the Earth's field is recorded by the orientation of the domains in the rock. The slight magnetism that results can be measured with sensitive instruments. The evidence from the rock shows that there have been times when the magnetic field of Earth has diminished to zero and then reversed itself. This reversal of magnetic poles is clearly evident in the seafloor of the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. On the ocean floor in the mid-ocean ridge, ridges, continuous eruptions of lava produce new seafloor. This new rock is magnetized according to the existing magnetic field. 
older seafloor is pushed away from the ridge as newer seafloor forms. Magnetic surveys of the ocean floor reveal a zebra striped pattern centered along and symmetrical to the mid ocean ridge. Because each stripe indicates magnetic direction, the alternating stripes show the change from periods of normal polarity to periods of reverse polarity. More than 20 reversals have taken place in the past 5 million years. The most recent occurred 780,000 years ago. Prior reversals happened 870,000 years ago and 950,000 years ago. Notes. Like tape from a tape recorder, the ocean bottom preserves its own record in a magnetic record. Studies of deep sea sediments indicate that the field was virtually switched off for 10,000 to 20,000 years just over 1 million years ago. We cannot predict when the next reversal will occur because the reversal sequence is not regular, but there is a clue in recent measurements that show a decrease for over 5% of the Earth's magnetic field strength in the last 100 years. If this change is maintained, we may well have another magnetic field reversal within 2,000 years. Concept check, why does a magnetic compass point northward? Like poles repel, opposite poles attract. The direction of the magnetic field outside a magnet is from the north to the south pole. A magnetic field is produced by the motion of electric charges. Permanent magnets are made by simply placing pieces of iron or certain iron alloys in strong magnetic fields. An electric current produces a magnetic field. A moving charge is deflected when it crosses magnetic field lines but not when it travels parallel to the field lines. Since a charged particle moving through a magnetic field experiences a deflecting force, a current of charged particles moving through a magnetic field also experiences a deflecting force. The principal difference between a galvanometer and an electric motor is that in an electric motor, the current is made to change direction every time the coil makes a half revolution. A compass points northward because Earth itself is a huge magnet.